We're back in the patch, and I'm raring to shape up and prepare for a bumper spring and summer. It's still pretty damp and chilly here in Tasmania, but the days are getting longer, and the jobs you do now will pay dividends later on. But first, let's get in and review what's been going on in the veggie garden. The winter patch is still productive. We've got loads of leafy greens, we've got beets and bucket loads of brassicas. But it is looking a little untidy around some of the paths and beds. So first up, I'd like to clean up the leaves and dirt that have built up around the nooks and crannies. This will help to discourage pests and diseases, as well as making a nice tidy space for you to look forward to working in. Weeds still grow in the cold, and they can even be helpful. A free cover crop to protect the soil. It's really important to take care of your weeds, especially around your crops that are dormant for the winter, like asparagus. Get in early and carefully. This will help to minimise root competition and disturbance to your crown. I've also cleaned up one of the other perennials in the patch, rhubarb. So now, with the emergence of this new growth, it's the perfect time to feed it. And with rhubarb, you can be quite generous. I've got a fair bit of blood and bone here. Just gonna sprinkle that around the outside. And then I'm gonna cover it up with the good stuff, compost. This should be enough food for the rhubarb to munch on through spring. Now, for our new spring crops, it's vital to make sure that the soil is in good shape for our veggie success. If you've been using the same bed for a couple of crops, it's a good idea to check the soil pH. When you take your sample, make sure that it's soil and doesn't contain any organic material like grass or straw. It's a pretty simple process. Just add a couple of drops of your dye, then your white barium powder and wait for a couple of seconds for it to change colour. It's actually a lot sweeter than I thought. It's about six and a half to seven, which is perfect. If it was more acidic, if it was lower, then you might want to add some lime and do that about two weeks before planting and fork it in well. And the calcium in the lime will help to soften up the ground. Rake back any mulch and loosen up the soil, especially when you're going to plant root crops. And then pull out any more weeds that you find. And now to add more of the good stuff that I gave the perennials. Compost. Compost is an all-round soil conditioner full of good stuff to keep your soil alive. It's chock full of life and plant nutrients to keep them happy and healthy. I'm also adding well-aged animal manure. You can use blood and bone, but both of them will add vital nutrients for your next crop. Lay some straw mulch on the top to prevent your freshened soil from drying out. In Tassie, as well as some of the other southern states, spring can be a windy time. So a little tip is to put down some compost or even some wood chip on top of your straw to hold it all in place, because you don't want your mulch over in your neighbour's garden. Well, that bed's all refreshed and should be ready to plant out in a couple of weeks. But what do you plant at this time of the year? Well, for me, it's all about planting and crop rotation. And that's as simple as not planting the same type of crop in the same spot for the next season. Now, you can still be harvesting from these brassicas, but they're gonna stop producing very soon. So let's just rip them out and chuck them in the compost bin. Brassicas are heavy nitrogen feeders and will deplete the soil of nutrients. Now, continual planting can cause a buildup of pathogens that love that particular family of veg. Even the old ones left behind, well, they can be vectors as well. To 
improve your soil after brassicas, you might want to try a nitrogen-fixing legume like peas. But I'm going to go for a root crop, carrots. They've got a nice long taproot. They don't need much food, and what they do need, they can mine deep down in the soil profile. So all I've got to do is break up this compacted soil with my fork. If you've only got one bed, and you're still determined to plant another crop of heavy feeders, like, say, potatoes, then you'll need to properly refresh your bed. Now, if you're super keen on getting a crop in and you want to start planting now, may I suggest seed over seedling? And get in a quick maturing crop, like leafy lettuce, radish, or even parsley. One that's in and out within six weeks. Now, you can be meticulous with your sowing and plant every four centimetres. But like with these lettuces, I'm a bit slap happy. That way, I can thin out and harvest as the season progresses. Don't plant too much too early. You don't want your young seedlings to get blasted by early, chilly spring weather. And the last thing, leave a bit of room. You don't want to get to November and suddenly realise you've got no space for those glorious summer crops like your tomatoes and your chilies.